Welcome, everybody. Uh, bienvenue tout le monde. Welcome to the séance du comité de démolition de la ville de Westmount pour jeudi le 17 février 2022. Welcome to the demolition hearing um, for the city of Westmount for on uh, Thursday, February 17th, 2022. I call this meeting to order and we will begin with the uh, item number two, adoption of the agenda, Councillor Peart. Do you? Uh, All right, I was, I technical difficulties. That's okay, that's okay. I can hand it over to someone else if you would prefer for this one. I can do it. Okay, thank you, Mary. Councilor, excuse me, Councilor Gallery. Uh, I will hand over item uh, item to number move. two to you. Thank you. I move the agenda of the demolition committee sitting of February 17, 2022 be adopted. Thank you. A seconder on this will be Councilor Aronson. All in favor? Carried. Um, and I would just like to explain how this meeting, uh, how this meeting will take place. The purpose of this meeting is to render a decision on the demolition application for the building located at one to three Hillside Avenue in accordance with the act respecting land use planning and development, as well as bylaw 1317 con uh, concerning demolition. Madame Emily Pelletier from the urban planning uh, department will present the demolition project. The applicant will then be invited to make a presentation to the committee members and to the public. Any interested persons who sent either comments or oppositions to the city clerk's office within the prescribed time period have been invited to make presentations to the committee using the online form made available within the prescribed hours. Um, and I may also dis uh, I can also uh, hear any other person who makes who wish to make presentations to the committee. Once the committee has heard all those who would like to make a statement, it will have the opportunity to withdraw and deliberate on the project. At this point, you don't have to leave the Zoom, um, but council and the administration will leave the Zoom and, and we will return uh, as quickly as we can. And the committee will render a decision or adjourn the meeting to render a decision at a later date. A second question period will be available to the public via Zoom webinar. All questions, uh, tonight for this council meeting must relate to the demolition application of one to three hillside. So you can submit your questions. Um, we have only had one question submitted to the city clerk's office today, but you can submit your questions via the Q and A um, Q and A button on the on the Zoom application. So with that, I think I will. Uh, we will now begin with the review of the demolition um, application. L'étude de la demande de démolition. Donc, je pense que Madame uh, Pelsi va commencer. Parfait, merci. Avec ça. Merci beaucoup. Je vais poursuivre en français pour la uh, démolition. Donc, je pense que vous voyez mon écran. Je suis très certaine. Ok. Parfait. Donc, euh, je vais poursuivre avec les, les procédures en tant que telles de, de la demande de démolition euh, qui est en ce moment ici au 1 3 et 16. Euh, donc, il y a d'abord eu un avis public et un affichage sur l'immeuble le 11 janvier. Suite au 11 janvier, il y a eu une période de 10 jours qui a été allouée pour la, période, euh, pour la réception des oppositions et des commentaires. Euh, donc, suite à cet avis public-là, on a reçu un total de 29 commentaires du public dont la majorité sont favorables à la démolition. Le dossier a ensuite été euh, présenté devant le comité consultatif d'urbanisme euh, lors de leur réunion le 28 janvier 2022 pour euh, obtenir leurs recommandations. Euh, et finalement, aujourd'hui, 17 février, la séance publique de démolition pour la prise de décision par le comité de démolition, euh, dont euh, l'évaluation va se faire notamment en fonction de critères d'évaluation qui, euh, qui se trouve dans le règlement sur les démolitions. Euh, les critères sont notamment de l'état de l'immeuble ou des immeubles visés dans la demande, de la détérioration de l'apparence architecturale ou du caractère esthétique du voisinage, du coût de la restauration, de l'utilisation projetée du sol dégagé et finalement de tout autre critère pertinent. Pour ce qui est de la demande en tant que telle, elle vise la démolition euh, du bâtiment, comme on disait, dans le 16, une démolition partielle à 87 euh, 
euh, des murs extérieurs et du toit. C'est un bâtiment de catégorie 2 dont la date de construction se situe entre 1910 et 1911. L'usage actuel est vacant. C'était à l'époque euh, en fait l'usage d'origine était un centre équestre. Euh, avant d'être occupé là, pendant une longue période de temps jusqu'en 2014 par euh, le manège militaire, l'armée canadienne en fait. Euh, L'état de l'immeuble actuel, on a reçu plusieurs rapports professionnels qui étaient soumis dans le cadre de la demande, euh, qui permet d'identifier que le bâtiment est en état de détérioration avancée et présente des problèmes structuraux majeurs. Le bâtiment est localisé au coin de l'avenue Hillside et avenue Hillside, à Hillside Lane, donc dans une zone résidentielle et sur un îlot euh, qui comprend là, de façon majoritaire des bâtiments euh, d'appartements de entre 6 et 8 étages. Le bâtiment en tant que tel a 4 étages. Euh, on voit le certificat de localisation. L'implantation au sol actuelle est de 89 des photos supplémentaires là, du, euh, du bâtiment en tant que tel. Pour ce qui est de la justification de la demande par le demandeur, donc en fonction des critères d'évaluation que j'ai mentionnés euh, précédemment, euh, le, en lien avec l'état de l'immeuble, l'architecture du bâtiment original, original doit être modifiée afin de tenir compte de l'usage résidentiel euh, qui est proposé dans le cadre de leur programme préliminaire. Il y a aussi la condition du bâtiment, comme j'ai expliqué plus tôt, qui, qui est en, en mauvais état, en état de, de détérioration, euh, notamment en raison du manque d'entretien dans les années passées. Puis pour ce qui est des de, de critères d'évaluation B, donc détérioration de l'apparence architecturale, du caractère esthétique, du voisinage, l'avenue Hillside est devenue fortement résidentielle avec le temps, donc il propose de ramener cet usage au bâtiment pour une meilleure harmonisation au secteur. Ensuite, euh, pour le coût de la restauration, donc, euh, donc pour les fins de la, la transformation du bâtiment euh, en bâtiment résidentiel et la mise en norme euh, en vigueur, mise aux normes en vigueur euh, par rapport du code de bâtiment, la démolition nécessite, comme il explique, euh, 87 pour, euh, une démolition de 87 mais dans le cas où il y aurait une restauration, donc une démolition à moins de 50 qui ne ferait pas l'objet d'une demande de démolition, le coût serait environ de 10 millions de dollars, d'après leur rapport qui a été soumis dans le cadre de la demande. Et, et finalement, pour ce qui est de l'utilisation projetée du sol dégagé, donc euh, ce qui est mentionné, c'est que le projet propose effectivement là, un bâtiment résidentiel, ce qui est conforme aux zonages en vigueur actuellement sur le site. Donc, euh, maintenant pour le programme préliminaire de remplacement, D'abord, c'est important de mentionner que le, le programme préliminaire fait l'objet d'une demande TPC moi et qui sera étudié euh, subséquemment là, à, la, à, la, à la demande de démolition et qui fera l'objet d'une consultation publique si la demande de démolition est autorisée. Donc, euh, le bâtiment qui est proposé il reprend la même implantation que le bâtiment actuel. Euh, avec un, un bâtiment, ça sera un bâtiment de cinq étages comprenant 27 unités résidentielles et dont les denses, la densité et la hauteur seraient non conformes euh, au zonage actuel dans la zone. Pour le taux, l'implantation, comme je dis, ça, elle, reste, elle reste inchangée par rapport au bâtiment actuel. Euh, on constate pour la demande de démolition là, que la démolition serait démolie à 100 j'ai une erreur avec mon... Je m'excuse. Bon, voilà, je suis remis. Euh, pour ce qui est une élévation, une élévation arrière, euh, le bâtiment, là, comme euh, c'est comme inscrit, euh, nécessiterait une démolition de 58, 58 de la façade arrière. On voit qu'il y a une création d'ouverture euh, ici pour des, des, des terrasses et que les ouvertures qui sont euh, comme les, les, les ouvertures, ils sont reprises comme les ouvertures existantes. Ensuite, si je vais à l'élévation, je m'excuse, j'ai un, un petit problème avec euh, ma présentation. Je vais aller directement à, à l'ambiance, en fait, euh, qu'on peut, comme je dis, le constater là, que le bâtiment qui est proposé reprend euh, substantiellement là, le... Les, les formes actuelles, qui, un, le, 
une bonne architecture actuelle de type industriel avec les grandes fenêtres. Euh, donc, voilà pour ça. Et bon, pour ce qui est de la recommandation CCU qui a eu lieu, euh, qui est passée dans le fond le 28 janvier euh, dernier, considérant que les dispositions du règlement de démolition numéro 37 de la ville de Westmount ont été considérées et que la demande ne répond pas aux critères, considérant que la démolition proposée à 87 et le remplacement du rang de briques extérieures sur l'ensemble du bâtiment sont perçus comme une démolition complète puisqu'aucune composante originale apparente ne sera retenue dans le projet en résultant, considérant qu'une part importante de la démolition résulte du choix du demandeur d'introduire un système d'écran par pluie sur la face extérieure du mur existant, considérant que le projet de remplacement profite des dérogations droits acquis attribués au site existant, considérant que le projet de remplacement n'est pas un projet de conservation du patrimoine, considérant que le maintien de l'implantation aurait été justifié dans une démarche de préservation patrimoniale alors que le projet proposé repose sur une démolition apparente quasi complète, considérant que le projet de remplacement se limite à une évocation du bâtiment actuel puisqu'il n'offre plus d'authenticité et que cette évocation semble un retour insuffisant en fonction des dérogations nécessaires pour approuver le projet de remplacement. Pour ces motifs, il est résolu, il est résolu que le comité consultatif d'urbanisme donne, donne un avis défavorable au comité de démolition concernant la demande déposée en vertu du règlement de démolition numéro 1317 de la ville de Westmont pour la démolition de 87 de l'immeuble ici au 13 avenue Hillside. Donc, ça complète ma présentation. Merci. Merci beaucoup, Mme Pelletier. Et maintenant, je pense que um, on a une autre présentation. I think the applicant is going to give a presentation now, Mme Sima. Oui, euh, je vais les promouvoir euh, à panéliste. Donc, ils vont maintenant pouvoir apparaître à l'écran. Ça va prendre Parfait. un peu. Bonjour. Bonjour, bienvenue. Merci, je vais juste partager mon écran. Parfait, merci, on le voit. Ça ne sera pas bien long. Est-ce que vous voyez mon écran? Oui. Parfait. Donc, on voulait un peu compléter la présentation de la ville et puis euh, expliquer un peu plus au niveau du background, de l'état de l'immeuble puis les bénéfices pour la communauté. Parfait. Donc, Et peut-être vous faites un, juste une petite introduction. Vous êtes Madame Irlando. Oui, oui exactement. Que que euh, mon nom est Maya Irlando. Euh, je suis la directrice du développement euh, dans le projet. Euh, et donc, en fait, je ne sais pas si on voit les autres membres de mon équipe. Il y a Luciano Irlando, Maurice Martel. Et M. André Houle, qui devrait aussi être là. Je ne sais pas s'ils si sont euh, là parce qu'ils pourraient intervenir également. Ah oui, ils sont là. OK, parfait. Je le vois. Ils sont là. Bienvenue tout le monde. Bonjour. Bonjour. OK, donc on commence. Excellent. Donc, pour donner un peu de... de, de... En fait, je vais faire la représentation en anglais. Uh, to give a bit of background, we bought the building over three years ago and that the intention was actually to do a restoration project. But as we got the reports on the Solrock report, the structural engineers report, all the challenges to change this building and the architecture as we were changing the use from an industrial to residential project, we decided that it wasn't possible to restore the building the, by demolishing less than 50%. So that's why we decided to present a full demolition and a new project, um, which was not uh, recommended by the CCU. So in March, 2020, we decided to change gears and said, okay, we need to restore this project, restore this building and, and understand how this can be done. Um, it was a big challenge uh, because You know, the building was in poor condition and we needed to find solution on how, how this can be done. So the solution we had was really to go get extensive study 
on the masonry and how we can preserve the structural masonry of the building. Um, something else that we wanted to put focus on, on the, the photo here on the top left, you can see uh, when it was a writing academy. Uh, and at the bottom here, you could see the, the arena, which occupies 80% of the interior space. And that's what, when it was occupied by the army. So changing this building to a residential project, uh, it's really uh, completely changing the use. We need to put you know, windows in different places, different openings. Uh, we need to comply with the building code. It requires a lot of changes. Um, also, this, this type of roof is not adapted to a residential project. So we can keep this roof. Uh, in addition to not being adaptable to residential project, it is currently supporting, being supported by steel columns, which are corroded. And I'll get in further detail and explain this a bit further down, uh, but they, the roof is currently being supported by corroded columns. And the roof represents 42% of the demolition percentage. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, uh, we, we mandated the firm called UL, who are the subject matter experts in the field, to analyze and give us more studies on the structural masonry to see how we can save this building. Um, so a lot of different steps were followed. So the first thing they did is actually um, go and do a whole inspection on the exterior and interior facade of the building, uh, noting all the uh, cracks where the bricks was, you know, detaching, uh, all the, the problems with the brick. Uh, then the second test was a bit more sophisticated where they actually did 20 holes in 20 different sections. It's exactly like the photo you can see here to, um, you know, do a visual observation of what's happening with the masonry, but also take these bricks in a lab in order to analyze them. So really to get data and understand uh, how this, the, the brick was, you know, protecting the wall. And Mr. André Ull, who is a structural engineer who specializes in heritage building, was there to kind of confirm the data and really bring the structural perspective and how we can restore the building. Uh, so the missionary shows several significant damages. Uh, we can see here a lot of photos uh, we can see that the brick is delaminating, uh, that the mortar is crumbling, uh, there's absence of sprental stone under the windows, um, there's actually frost that was found inside the wall. Uh, there's also black, blackish mortar, so that shows the presence of humidity in the wall. Uh, there's also vegetation on the wall. Um, so this is really demonstrate the damage that the wall has and it's it's really because of the water content and this was shown in the lab test uh, the lab results showed that the the saturation of the brick is at 84 percent and that's above the critical saturation which is 58 and that's why the lifetime of the brick was reached it's not because we do not want to restore it it's just no longer viable Another challenge we have is with the uh, east wall. So that's the wall on um, Hillside Lane. So the sidewalk was built on top of the foundation. And what happens is that the water and the snow infiltrates in the foundation and it just accelerates the deterioration. And because of that, uh, the UL report you know, tells us that we're not able to, to keep and we need to change the foundation wall on the east side. Um, another challenge that we have with this wall is that uh, it, it, the roof is supported by six steel columns and these six steel columns are corroded. So they would need to be dismantled, uh, with, of, um, dismantled of the three layers of brick. So the photos at the bottom here, you could see the steel column and you can see how it's swelling and how it's, it's not in, in a good state. So this wall represents a 25% demolition uh, of the total. And uh, the National Building Code 
um, you know, our structure is, is not up to code. So we need to, you know, meet the current seismic and gravity design criteria, which I'm sure Mr. Ud could give more details on if you, anybody has any questions. Uh, here are more photos where you could see the steel columns who, which are holding the roof. Um, actually, when UL did the report, they actually found that one portion of the wall was actually separating from the structure, so we had to do urgent repairs. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also see that the brick is moving on a side. You can easily see the cracks. Uh, there's also, you know, uh, close to the parapet, there's a lot of waves in the brick. Uh, some of the bricks are actually um, sinking mm -hmm. on the arch of the window. Uh, so that's why it was UL's recommendation to replace the exterior brick. So as we all know, the, the building has been vacant for a number of years and a vacant building is a hazard. Uh, people are breaking into the building and you know, we're finding graffiti. Uh, our security cameras were stolen. Uh, so we, we really were excited about this project and we wanted to move forward. We really feel like having a vacant building is, is a hazard for the community, really. So just to further explain the 80% demolition percentage. So in order to conserve and restore the building, we need to demolish the sections. We have no choice. So as we discussed, uh, the hillside lane wall, the foundation needs to be changed because of the sidewalk that was built on top of the foundation and all the water that's infiltrating. And because of the steel columns that are corroded and that need to be dismantled. Uh, the roof, it's not adapted for a residential project. So the roof uh, will account for 42% of the demolition. The existing openings, which are the windows, account for 14% of the demolition. And these are existing windows that will be replaced. And we have a 4% contingency. Um, and anybody can attest with this type of project, we can expect surprises. So we needed to build that in. Uh, and the rest accounts for 15%. So really, just the demolition of the hillside lane wall and the roof represents 67%. Uh, the integration in the neighborhood. So, you know, the, the neighborhood, as uh, Amelie mentioned, it's a residential area. So converting this industrial building into a residential one will really revitalize the neighborhood. You know, having welcoming 27 families, it's, it's just gonna enrich the, the neighborhood, which is already, you know, a high density area with, you know, eight story buildings and, uh, you know, condos and a school. So we really think it's, it's gonna help. And the current building really uh, lacks harmony. And we really think that uh, this project will really kind of restore the balance that was, that's currently lacking. In terms of the benefits for the community, uh, you know, in addition to restoring this building, uh, you know, we do wanna honor its, its history. Uh, we are in contact with the army and we want, we will be saving, you know, the, the lintel and whatever piece we can, uh, and we'll be in contact with them to, you know, uh, work on a commemorative, commemorative plate together. Um, we'll be removing the, you know, electrical poles and transformers, which are, you know, a visual pollution to everybody in the neighborhood. Uh, we want to collaborate with an organization to plant trees in the area. And our project are, is a LEED certified project. So, you know, following um, sustainable construction practices, I think will be a really benefit to the community also. So I think everybody has seen the renderings. I will skip through them quickly. Um, in terms of the sun study, uh, there are no impacts uh, to the neighbors in terms of uh, the sun study. Uh, we're only adding one story and because there's a significant setbacks, there is no impact. Uh, we have also done a circulation study that demonstrated that there would be no impact uh, on the circulation. Construction would last approximately 24 months. 
um, and the demolition will use dust control procedure. That's for the demolition of the uh, east wall and part of the west wall. Um, in conclusion, uh, in order to restore the building, we need to go through the demolition, unfortunately, of certain section. Uh, the building is an advanced deterioration, and I think it's very clear from the reports. Uh, you know, we really think that this building will uh, really improve the neighborhood, and uh, and right now it's it's just a hazard for the community. So we really hope we'll have your support in order to demolish and and really improve the area. Uh, that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you very much for your um, for your presentation for the details that you've shared in that. Um, it was it was very helpful. And with uh, now we're going to move uh, to the public question period. But does this council have any questions? I I, I have a few clarifications uh, I want to ask. But if there's any council members who want to ask questions as well, uh, Councillor Aronson, we'll start with you. Uh, Councillor Aronson, I should note is the is. Uh, member of council, but, but he is the council representative where one to three hillside. Uh, he's, he's that, he's their council person. So, yeah. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Ms. Geraldo, um, thank you for being here tonight and for your presentation. I found it to be quite thorough and uh, I do very much appreciate it. I wanted to ask uh, just a follow up question with respect for the need for um, the, the, the repair of the uh, uh, the east, well, the, the hillside wall, as, as especially with respect to the foundation issues that have been caused by uh, overlapping materials between the sidewalk and the, uh, and the wall. Um, uh, first off, uh, do you anticipate having to do any kind of excavation as part of this demolition project or, uh, or, or, or part of the replacement project, or are you leaving the, um, the ground floor in, in place? Like, is there, are you going below the slab or is the ground where the ground is and nothing's going on? Yes, we will be excavating. Yes, there will be further excavation. But right now, the basement is, uh, I think, uh, uh, seven feet uh, high. So yeah, we, we're not conform. We would need to excavate because the the basement is actually where the stable were. So they they don't have the normal height. I can only imagine the condition of a basement that was a stable that was now a an abandoned building. Yeah, uh, that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, a secondary question uh, with respect to um, to ensuring that the uh, excavation and demolition within the uh, that is foreseen at this time uh, is not uh, an undue burden on the uh, the residents in the area. Um, have you given some thought to uh, vibration and making sure that the uh, the surrounding buildings, when you're doing excavation, are protected, and what your plan is for that? Uh, that's uh, a very good question. I'm going to transfer this to the team. Uh, Maya, yeah. Hello. Hello. Hi. We don't see you on camera, but we can hear Oops. you. So yes, if you sorry. might be more helpful for uh, the audience to see you on camera, if we can. But if not, we'll uh, we'll just listen. Hello. Can oui. you hear me? Bonjour. Oui, oui. bonjour. On vous attend. Bonjour. Alors. Uh, Je peux peut-être donner quelques réponses additionnelles à ce qu'a expliqué Maya. Euh, il est évident que si on doit faire des travaux de soutènement, euh, il y aura du, du, du bruit et des vibrations. Mais ça, c'est le lot normal et habituel de n'importe quel chantier de construction. Donc, euh, nous nous rendons compte qu'à un certain moment, il y aura certains, certains travaux qui vont affecter le voisinage mais ce sont des travaux qui font partie de, de la construction en général. Il n'y a rien de particulier qui se rattache à ce type de travaux. Évidemment, ce sont de, des travaux de soutènement, underpinning, qu'il va falloir effectuer pour pouvoir renforcer et créer une nouvelle structure pour le bâtiment. Okay, est-ce que ça répond à, à votre question, Monsieur Aronson? Um, bon? yeah, kind of. Um, this is this is excellent to know that that we're dealing with uh, the type of of, of uh, construction or demolition and evacuation uh, excavation that falls within normal parameters of normal building projects. That's great, and and I'm glad to hear it. It does 
set my mind at ease to a certain extent. Um, so we're not looking at anything extraordinary here. We're not looking at blasting. Uh, we're, you know, we, we can expect that the the uh, the type of um, disturbance to the neighbors will fall within normal parameters. That's good to know. Um, have you given any thought to the type of communication plan that you will be putting together uh, in order to make sure that all of your future neighbors are well informed as to exactly what they can expect uh, and what to do in the event that um, the, the project is in, uh, problematic or interferes with their normal enjoyment of the properties. Absolutely. Yes, of course. Actually, we, actually we, sorry, I'll take this one because we've uh, met with the neighbors. Uh, we've met with the school. Uh, we've met uh, also with uh, St. Margaret uh, and we've met with our neighbors at 11 Hillside um, in order to, to share. And, uh, and actually, um, Miss. Uh, uh, Vivian from uh, St. Margaret had a really great suggestion and asked for kind of a weekly newsletter update and we thought that was a really good idea to to let everybody know how things are going and and uh, we really thought we would integrate this in our in our planning is to have kind of a weekly newsletter to say what's happening next week you know what's going on and that way everybody's informed uh, so we decided to take that on and integrate that as part of our you know communication plan. Okay. Well, That's it is very incredibly good to hear. gratifying. To thank, I agree with the mayor. Incredibly gratifying to hear that you guys have have already considered uh, how you might put your best foot forward in in not only new doing a, a project to improve and revitalize the neighborhood, but also to start off on the right foot in terms of maintaining really good relationships with your neighbors. It certainly uh, does put my mind at ease to to uh, to, to an even further extent. Uh, one thought, final question. Um, and this really is more about the replacement project, but just so I have it in mind. You have mentioned that you're, uh, you're LEED certified. That's fantastic. Can you tell us a little bit more about uh, precisely how you're planning to bring power into the building? Will it be the traditional um, hydro uh, westmount uh, or, you know, in terms of its services or something else, perhaps geothermal, um, solar panel, redundancies, et cetera? Um we're not in that level of details yet, but yes, the initial plan is to go electrical. So we're not going to be any doing any journal, geothermal right now. That's not part of the plan. But to tell you the truth, uh, you know, we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get there. <laughs> yeah. So if if you were to be granted the the demolition permit uh, and we do go the the Pipis M1 route, then with this there'll be there'll be an opportunity with more public consultations on that where you would have you would. Uh, yeah. Certainly, it would be in your best interest to to let citizens understand mm -hmm. better what that lead certification would mean on that site. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, uh, Merci. Madame la Maire, excusez-moi, j'ai une question. Oui. Je, je voudrais pour clarifier parce que je viens de 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 me rendre compte que uh, nous avons uh, eu uh, dans les commentaires du CCU en fait un avis défavorable pour la demande que nous sommes en train de présenter actuellement. Est-ce que c'est bien ça que j'ai compris? Est-ce que c'est bien ça? Oui, oui, ça c'est la recommande euh, Madame Jodoin, à lever la main. Est-ce que vous voulez oui. prendre Je, je peux répondre question? à ça. Oui. Euh, le processus, M. Gerlando, euh, fonctionne, euh, qu'il s'agisse dans ce cas-ci de démolition ou d'autres types de permis, où le comité consultatif d'urbanisme fournit un avis au conseil municipal qui va prendre une décision. Alors, on est à l'étape où l'avis du CCU, le conseil consultatif, le comité consultatif d'urbanisme a été fourni au comité de démolition, au conseil. Dans ce, à Westmount, c'est le, le, même, le, même, le même groupe de personnes, mais ce sont les conseillers. Et euh, ce soir, nous sommes à l'étape où le comité de démolition va prendre... Euh, à une décision après délibération. Mais est-ce que le CCU qui vient de faire une, une recommandation euh, euh, négative, enfin contre la démolition, contre, pas la démolition, le, le, la partie de démolition que nous demandons, a eu la possibilité d'examiner tous les, tous les documents que nous, avons, que nous venons de vous faire voir, qui sont le fruit de, de consultations et d'études très approfondis qui ont pris à peu près 18 mois pour, pour vous présenter et qui nous ont amené à cette conclusion parce que s'il y avait d'autres choses à faire, on l'aurait fait. 
Mais euh, si jamais, euh, euh, par, euh, par un hasard, enfin, je ne peux pas imaginer que le, 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 la démolition nous soit niée, c'est vrai. On, on, on serait vraiment dans un dans un dans une situation vraiment très compliquée parce que les études nous disent qu'on doit procéder à une démolition et euh, je, je vois pas comment faire autrement donc euh, c'est une recommandation que je comprends pas à la lumière des études que nous avons fait c'est des tierces parties reconnues et totalement indépendantes qui ont donné leur avis, qui ont fait des études, et on reçoit un, un avis défavorable. C'est-à-dire, ce n'est pas vous qui recevez un avis défavorable. Le conseil, le conseil ou le comité de démolition reçoit un avis de la part du CCU, et pour vous confirmer, euh, ils ont eu accès à la documentation qui a été présentée, euh, et oui. cette leur avis est soumis et le comité de démolition, tout comme le conseil municipal lors d'autres avis du CCU, peut décider de tenir compte ou pas de ces avis après en avoir pris connaissance. Est-ce que je peux me permettre de demander à Maya de repasser la page où on parle de pourcentage de démolition? Nous avons une tarte que je voudrais commenter. Oui, celui-là, c'est 62 j'imagine, avec le mur puis le, le toit. Oui, un instant, je vais juste retrouver mon la page. Ce ne sera pas bien long. Je vais l'afficher. Est-ce que je peux poser une question qu'on attend pour ça? Absolument. C'est vacant depuis quand encore? 2014, c'est ça? Nous, nous avons acquis l'immeuble fin 2018. C'était déjà vacant. Oui. OK. Donc, c'était déjà vacant pour quelques années avant oui, 2018. Exact. Oui. Juste pour ajouter, l'état de l'immeuble, ce n'est pas quelque chose qui se passe en, en trois ans. Là. Ça, c'est des décisions. Non, je le sais. Oui, je, je pas, le sais. C'est juste Alors, important de prendre ça en considération. Ce n'est pas en trois ans qu'un immeuble... Euh, devient en mauvais état. Alors, ce que je, vous, je me permets de souligner, c'est que si je suis, euh, disons, si je regarde et je lis qu'il y aurait une démolition qui équivaut à 87 de, de, du bâtiment, c'est un chiffre choquant. Et je suis le premier à le dire. Mais si on, on analyse la ventilation de ces interventions, ça change. Parce que vous regardez, le, le toit y est pour 42 Le toit, c'est juste seulement le toit y est pour 42 Le mur West Hillside Lane, qui, qui, euh, qui intègre les, les six colonnes qui sont totalement rouillées et corrodées et, et, et sur lequel le, le, le trottoir a été bâti, représente 25 ça, c'est des interventions qui sont un must. C'est absolument impossible de les éviter pour pouvoir réaliser quelque projet que ce soit. Parce que ce mur-là a une, une structure d'acier portante qui n'est qui plus, euh, plus fonctionnelle. La même chose pour la maçonnerie. Nous avons vu que la maçonnerie, en particulier de ce côté-là, a atteint des niveaux de 84 d'humidité, ce qui signifie que cette brique-là, elle n'est plus viable. Vous avez entre les mains les études qui le démontrent. Nous, on, on est, je vous avoue, on, on, je crois que ce, cette, cette tarte euh, peut facilement euh, permettre de de vie, ouais. visualiser et d'interpréter ce 87 OK. Et juste pour les gens qui sont en ligne avec nous autres, just so they understand, anything above 50 uh, demolition obviously brings us to this, uh, this type of, uh, the, 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 where you have to seek a demolition permit. So just, I guess, obviously the roof and the, that wall would bring you above 50 Okay. 67%, yeah. yeah, it brings you to 67%, but yeah. those two factors together brings you above the 50% threshold. Absolutely. Okay, merci. Um, 
Je pense que euh, M. Aronson, est-ce que c'est vous êtes correct? Vous avez posé vos questions parce que M. Euh, conseiller Demico a des questions aussi. Uh, Madame Mayor, I uh, was uh, completely satisfied with uh, with Maya's answers, and I appreciate her contribution. And I, I thank Mr. Gilando for clarifying things that has already been said, so that we really fully understand the uh, the nature okay. of the project. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Demico. Oui. Uh, bonjour. Moi, ma seule question c'est um, le coût estimé de la construction. Uh, Est-ce que vous avez les fonds nécessaires pour terminer la construction? Écoutez, évidemment. Uh, comme nous faisons dans, dans chaque projet, nous avons les fonds nécessaires pour euh, effectuer la, 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 le pourcentage d'investissement de, 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 de la part de, des investisseurs. Et ce, sont, ce sont nos banques qui vont nous permettre de financer le projet. Vous savez, nous ne sommes pas un grand groupe, un groupe multinational. On est on est une compagnie familiale, on est, on est, on est situé à Westmount et, et on, a, on est dans le domaine depuis une quinzaine d'années et tous nos projets se sont toujours bien terminés. On a, on a nos sources de financement, on est bien connu et on n'a aucun problème à ce niveau-là. OK, merci. Est-ce que, est que vous avez d'autres questions, M. Demico? Non, c'est beau. Is there anyone else from Canada? Councillor Peart, who is also uh, our Commissioner of Urban Planning and Infrastructure, and he sits on the PAC, the CCU. He is a member of that, uh, that committee as well. Councillor Peart. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, thank you for the presentation. It's very, it very clear and helpful. Um, there's just a couple of questions to some of the, like the choice of words used. Um, um, you had said it's lead certified, but I think you mean lead design because it can't be certified until it's constructed, right? <laughs> Yes. And, and if that's the case, are you, can you tell us wh at which level of lead certification you are targeting? But to tell you the truth, we are not really able to tell you now because lead obviously means that, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we can reach a certain level when we build, uh, uh, when we go for a new building. In, uh, in this case, uh, we, 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 will, we are not doing this. So obviously we will have to see, we, we have already approached a lead certification uh, 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 corporation that will help us to determine uh, this level as soon as we, uh, we know exactly where we're going. And as soon as we get uh, a construction plan in place. Okay. okay thank you for that, um, a couple more questions. Um, but but it will be lead. It will be lead. Okay. But I, I, I would caution that we have to really focus on the demolition aspect of this and not the replacement project at exactly. this point. Thank you, Madam Menendez. Um, you keep referring to a restoration, but when it's 87% of the building is gone and 13% re remains, is it really reasonable to be calling it a restoration? Isn't this a construction that is in the style of, in the volume of? Would that be, not be more accurate? Well, you, you saw the, the, the ventilation of, this, uh, of this, uh, these percentages. I believe that, uh, you know, 42% for the roof, 25% for the east wall are, are, uh, are they speak for, the, for themselves. I believe that uh, uh, we also have something like 14% for opening because based on the methodology of the demolition permit, we have to take in account to the openings. So even if we, we, we have openings that uh, are uh, existence and we just simply uh, replace uh, the windows, they have to be accounted into, into the percentage. So obviously you understand that this brings us to to very high level and uh, i we try believe me we try everything to to to, to be uh, at a lower level than that but uh, the study obliged us to to get to that level and as i said before i also uh annoyed and, and I, I, I take your place and I say 80%, 87% is a very high level of uh, percentage of demolition, 
but when you when you see the the state of the building when you see the ventilation where we see where our intervention had need to be done i think it's it's explainable it makes sense I, I suppose it's just I was challenging the terminology that's being used, not so much the, the number and to call it a restoration it just doesn't seem to be an, an accurate representation of the of what of, well, of what is what could potentially be ahead of you. But well, this we, like, move no, on to the we, we, we call it restoration because we're going to rebuild the same building. You know, obviously we have to proceed with a certain demolition, but at the end we're going to keep bring back the same building we're going to restore the existing building with uh, with a residential uh, vocation with a residential use but the the large window will be there the shape will be there the the to hell on the side will be uh, saved and and replaced and and uh, you know the, the 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 character of the building will remain and i think that this is uh, probably a very very important uh, matter I'm sorry, my English is not perfect, but I'll do it. Vous pouvez répondre en français. Oh, um, so then maybe as a follow-up to that, if you were, as a hypothetical, if you were not restrained by that last 13% and you could rebuild anew, would this replacement project, and I know we're not supposed to focus on the replacement project, but would this replacement project be similar to what is being presented today? Or would you come back with something that is completely different? You know, since uh, uh, the, in the last 18 months, we have been following uh, very rigorously the recommendation of the, of the city and of the people that we are talking to. If the city, if we have allowed the, the demolition permit, one way or the other, we will rebuild the, the building the way we presented in this project. We are not going to do anything else. If this is uh, the main of your question. So just, just to add to that, uh, if ever we didn't have that 13%, I mean, we had the objective to restore. So this is what our goal was. And one thing we could not compromise on is the quality. We cannot compromise on quality and with the state of the building, we don't feel like we can do a quality construction if we demolish less than 87. Unfortunately, it's just in, in, in the information that we've received from the you know, subject matter expert in the field, it, it's not possible for us. Uh, and quality is not somewhere we can compromise. Uh, but you know, if we didn't have to keep this 30, 13%, it would just accelerate. You know the project, but our goal is to restore it because this is what the CCU asked us. So that's that's what we're doing. That's what we're presenting today. Uh, but this would be the difference: is that it would be much if you want faster to to do something. Uh, I think this is where you were going, Mr. Pertis, to say you know if you had to a hundred percent. If I'm understanding your question correctly, then I, I think it would just speed things up for the neighbors and less. You know, that's. I hope I'm answering. It, it will save a lot of time, and uh, but uh, we we will do we will rebuild the same project. Yes. Okay, so I think we are Thank going you. to move on. Or Councillor Peart, you're done. So I, uh, Councillor Rue, if you have a question pertaining to the demolition, um, and I just remind everyone we are uh, will if we get to that phase, there will be plenty of time to discuss the replacement project in in public consultation. So. Councillor Roux, c'est pas sur la démolition comme telle, c'est juste une petite question par rapport à ce que M. Gérald, Gérald, voyons, Gérald, Gérald, voyons, je suis pas capable. Gérald, Gérald, merci, excusez-moi. Euh, disait tout à l'heure quand vous avez répondu à conseiller d'Amico, vous avez parlé de projets que vous avez faits dans le passé. Est-ce qu'il y en a certains avec lesquels on risque d'être familier? Ben, écoutez, on a construit. Euh... Euh, des projets avec des façades euh, en, euh, pas patrimoniales, mais des, des anciennes façades de plus de 100 ans sur la rue Bishop. On a construit le 12-12 Bishop, qui est, une, qui est un immeuble où nous avons sauvegardé la façade euh, en pierre et nous, nous l'avons restaurée. 
et nous avons rajouté un bâtiment de 10 étages à l'arrière. Nous sommes en train de, de construire sur la même rue un autre immeuble euh, qui est le, le 1230-1234 où nous faisons exactement la même chose. Nous restaurons la façade. C'est un immeuble qui a, euh, où il y a eu un incendie et le troisième étage en, 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 euh, où toutes les, les boiseries sont disparues seront refaites euh, euh, à l'origine et seront euh, repl replacées. Donc, euh, on, on garde la façade, on garde la pierre, on continue, on, on termine le troisième étage en boiserie d'origine et on construit et on monte plus haut à l'arrière. Est-ce que c'est ce qui est au coin de René Lévesque? Parce que je sais qu'il y a de la construction de chez René Lévesque et qu'il y avait non, eu un feu, c'est pas la même chose. La, les deux sont sur la rue Bishop. OK. OK. Parfait, merci. Puis je m'excuse pour votre nom. Je ne sais pas ce que j'avais. Je suis devenue dyslexique tout d'un coup. Merci. <rire> OK. So I think that is uh, any other council members on that? No? And you had answered my question about in terms of vacancy from, uh, or that it has been vacant since at least 2014 and that you took ownership in 2018. And I think one of the things that's important to, to note in this, when you're, when you're looking at a demolition, and obviously we take, I mean, by law, you have to take a demolition seriously and, and, and we do, and it is, it is something that um, we review very thoroughly in the city, both the administration, the CCU, the PAC, and council. Um, so thank you for all of your further information, but as well to the urban planning department for their very thorough presentation on this. Um, just one question and maybe uh, Madame Jodouin or Madame Pensier has attended, but this is, a, this is a bit of a unique zone as well where this, uh, where this building is located and that it's quite a small zone, right? There are only two buildings that are currently in this zone and they are zoned three stories, is that correct? Oui. Exactement, c'est euh, les deux bâtiments, un 3 side puis un 11 l side font partie de cette zone. Euh, et c'est trois étages maximum dans cette zone. OK, puis les autres entourés de ça, c'est 7, 8, c'est en... Oui, je pourrais valider, là, mais compte tenu, là, tout les trois, les autres bâtiments autour, c'est maximum jusqu'à 8 étages. Donc, je OK, valider. parfait. Parfait. Euh, donc, il n'y a pas d'autres questions du, euh, du conseil à ce moment? Uh, OK, donc je pense qu'on va passer à les questions qui étaient soumises en ligne aujourd'hui. Madame Simon, est-ce qu'on va faire ça ou uh, est-ce qu'on prend les questions dans le Q&A? Oui, on peut faire la lecture de, de la, du commentaire qui a été reçu aujourd'hui. OK, Madame parfait. Elle va pouvoir faire la lecture de ce commentaire-là. Merci. Madame Jodouin. J'ai un copie aussi que je peux lire si c'est plus facile. I'm going to read mine. Copy, I have it right in front of me. Okay, so we received one copy. Uh, only one question was submitted online uh, to the city clerk's office today, and it is from Neil Hopley, and his question is, just wanted, or I guess it's a yeah, question commentary, Just wanted to chime in my support for the demolition of one to three hillside. It's old, in poor structural shape, and quite frankly, an eyesore to us in the area. I understand that other residents who live closer will have more of an impact on the work involved in demolishing a building of this size, although the benefit of its new and final result, result way outweighs any short-term inconvenience. So I guess that's more of a, a commentary as opposed to a question. So Mr. Hopley, your, your comments are noted by the committee. And that's the only one that was submitted online, but I see we have some questions in the chat. Um, do you want me to read these out or would you prefer if uh, I can go through them one-on-one? -on -one? They're okay. more... Parfait, dans le Q&A, donc maintenant, les, les membres du public peuvent aussi voir ces questions. Euh, oui. Donc, vous pouvez les lire et tout le monde les voit aussi à l'écran. Donc, pour la première que je le vois, is it, Madame Simon, do you want me to read them? Or is that... euh, Nathalie, normalement, euh, c'est vous qui faites en oui. fait la lecture. OK. 
So the first comment that came in was the building is in poor condition because of the owner never did any maintenance. This is by Nima Ibrahim Zadeh. Is it possible to answer the questions and comments? Um, yeah, I mean, I think this is more of a comment, but uh, you can, if you have anything you want to add on this, I think you had addressed this earlier and that you've, you've been in possession of the building since 2018. It's a 1910 building. So obviously it uh, has changes throughout that entire existence, but would you like to add more comment to that? No, nope, that was, just, I just wanted to reinforce that uh, the deterioration is not something that happened in the last few years. It's really decades of uh, low maintenance in the building. Uh, as well as when the army owned it. Uh, it. So it started many years ago. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Next question or comment. The next comment is from the same resident, Nima Ibrahim Zadeh. And, and this it is the states, second question. The area is already very crowded and adding 27 more families will not be in favor of the area and the neighbors. There's also a... Third comment by the same citizen. I live in 11 Hillside and we only had one information session with them. I, I think she's referring to um, the uh, promoter, the, the developer, and never convinced with the project presented at that time. I will uh, pause before the next two comments. Okay. so. Uh... These are addressed to me as the chair, but perhaps the owner does want to add in some commentary after. Um, but yes, you are correct. It is a dense neighborhood. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of apartment buildings in the area, and uh, there's a lot of services as well. There's schools. There's uh, you know it's close to a metro. It's 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 a dense urban neighborhood where things are quite accessible. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's you know, your, your commentary is noted. Uh, I think you're gonna see in, in the census results too that our, our actually our population has gone down uh, in, the, in the latest census. But uh, I, I, I note your comment that, that you feel 27 more families will not, uh, will not be a good thing for the neighborhood. Um, and I guess others would, might disagree. Does anyone else want to comment on this? Uh, Madame Girlando? Uh, yes, I, I have to disagree. I think that uh, it's definitely going to revitalize the neighborhood to change an abandoned building by a really beautiful project. Um, and uh, the circulation study confirmed that there would be no impact on circulation. 27 uh, uh, apartments is it's not something that would really change okay thank you and i note that uh just to note that there's a lot of uh for the people that are listening on uh, there's a lot of commentary from 11 hillside which is the building uh which is the condo building right next door uh which has 42 units i believe in it and was built approximately 10 years ago so it's uh that is a fairly new construction as well and that has 42 units in it um, and, and I understand, and we, we always discuss this in demolition hearings, the phase of construction is difficult. It is difficult to live next to a construction site, um, but there is a beginning and there isn't an end to it, uh, similar to the one next door, I guess, but uh, at 11 Hillside. But we are uh, aware of that, and that's why we have bylaws that... Uh, put in measures to protect uh, the neighbors from and try and mitigate any any as much disruption as we possibly can from a construction site and certainly one of this size. So next question. Or... Um, the next commentary and question is from Bill and Claudette Lopez. This hearing, whoops, this hearing is specially for the dimension, correct? It is. Uh, there will be a separate hearing on the a future date for the replacement project. That is the replacement project, which requires variance, has not yet been approved. Is that, that correct? That is correct. And you are correct to point out that, uh, and maybe you wrote this as we were discussing, as you know, some questions and commentary was coming up about the replacement project. This really is 
and it's it's human nature is to to look at you know what's it gonna, what's going in there right but we really have to look at the demolition aspect of it and is this building worthy of demolition because you could always spin it that the new project is is you know a more beautiful a more you know lead sort of whatever it may be but we really have to look at the demolition side to see if it is is it is worthy of being demolished we have um a heritage city with buildings that we we have placed a huge amount of effort into protecting so it's uh you are correct but if it were to get its demolition permit then they would go into the next phase of the Pepe of the Skyopi project. And yes, there would be opportunity there with two public consultations for citizens uh, because they would be asking for a zoning variance in terms of height. So uh, anyone else want to add to that or correct me if I got any of that wrong? No? Is it possible though that there might be, there's already been a one public consultation for that pro, for the PPC MOA, so I believe there might only there's be only one, one left. Is that accurate, Madame yeah. Jodouin? Madame Jodouin? Um, I'm seeing my colleague Emeline Pelsi nod, so I will refer to her. En fait, il y a déjà eu une, une présentation publique du projet de PPC MOA. En décembre 2019, je crois, ça fait déjà longtemps, mais ça, c'est une présentation publique qui est requise en fonction de notre règlement PPC moi à Westland. Mais la, la, la consultation publique en vertu de la loi sur l'aménagement euh, urbaniste n'a pas encore lieu puisque le projet n'a pas encore euh, été. Il euh, n'y a pas de projet de résolution qui a été fait encore pour euh, le PPC moi. Donc, ça va être suite à un, un projet de résolution qui va avoir une consultation publique. Que ça répond à votre question. Oui, je pense que ça l'aide. OK, parfait. Merci. La prochaine question. Oui. Um, from the same resident, Bill Lopez, uh, located at 11 Hillside. Thank you for the presentation. As you are aware, we have substantial and increasing damage due to water infiltration on the east wall in the garage due to fil water filtration, infiltration from 1-3 Hillside, I presume. The significant concern of owners and residents at 11 Hillside is that the process of demolition will worsen the situation. What guarantees can you give to prevent further damage, including a potential collapse of the wall, and how will you remedy the existing damage? Uh, <clears throat> je I would say that we are in contact constant avec le syndicat de copropriété du 11 Hillside. Nous sommes au courant du problème. Nous avons, euh, euh, effectivement, il y avait une infiltration d'eau que nous avons pu euh, localiser et que nous avons réparée, mais probablement il y a une autre infiltration que, que nous n'arrivons pas à trouver. Donc, euh, c'est ça qui cause probablement le problème à ce stade-ci. Nous, nous sommes prêts à faire les, toutes les réparations nécessaires. Il est évident qu'il est possible qu'il soit nécessaire d'escaver de, pour pouvoir euh, 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 comment dire, faire une, installer une membrane euh, qui empêche les infiltrations. Pour le moment, on n'est pas en mesure de le faire, mais il y a aucune crainte à avoir... Euh, De, des résidents du 11 Hillside, on va, on va tout réparer, euh, tout ce qui a pu survenir à cause d'infiltration dont on pourrait être la cause. OK, merci beaucoup. Uh, Madame Yolando, vous avez la, la, la main levée. <coughs> oh, peut-être. Maybe that's an old raised hand. OK. Oh, uh, C'était pas, pas levé. OK. Euh, la prochaine question, Madame Jodouin. Oh, you're on mute. Vous êtes sur so Zoom. This is also a um, question from Bill and Claudette Lopez. What is your plan for parking trucks and other equipment on what is already a narrow and crowded street, Hillside Avenue and Hills, Hillside Lane? I guess, well, this, I would just uh, add that 
we uh, this is not really part of the demolition at this point, and they would need a construction management plan uh, when they were given a permit, if and when they were to get to that stage of the permit process. I don't know if you have any other, uh, but it is it is a point that is noted and obviously of concern always with any construction project. Councillor Aronson. Sorry, uh, uh, Madam Mayor, I, I wonder if there is perhaps a point of clarification here. I, I, I believe that the that the, the residents question was with respect to um, to the uh, the trucks and other equipment needed for the demolition itself. Uh, we've got a lot of material that'll have to be removed and contractors that'll have to come and go on the demolition of things. Is that something we can discuss at this time? If I may. Um, I'll take the lead on this. Uh, we would we would need demolition permits when granted are issued at the same time as the construction replacement project uh, permit. And in both cases, we ask for a construction management. I agree that there is a need to remove from the site the debris from the demolition, as there will be a need to bring in materials and all of this. Um, movement of uh, vehicular and uh, parking is all planned ahead and submitted prior to uh, analyze, validated, and then uh, prior to the uh, uh, issuance of the permit. If I understand your question correctly, Madame Jodouin, nothing, it, regardless of what the deliberations are this evening, nothing will be set in stone and moving forward until such time as the city's administration is absolutely satisfied with uh, a traffic plan um, in order to uh, reduce or to eliminate, if possible, the uh, disturbance to the neighborhood. Is that correct? Reduce, certainly. I think elimination is a very optimistic approach. Thank you. Um, uh, I think that uh, that, um, that the councillor Purr is now the chair of the meeting as the mayor uh, seems to have been uh, kicked off by the internet. Uh, so I yield the floor to him. Excuse, sorry, apologies for that the technical glitch. Uh, mayor, I had just yielded the floor again uh, for okay. my follow-up question. So it's, it's, uh, it's back to you now. Okay, uh, Madame Jodoyer, do we have any more questions or we're, we're through the questions in the chat? Uh, no, we have a few more to go. Oh, so um, my, mine is not to, oh, open, okay. Um, the resident, um, there is an, uh, a resident, Nima Ibrahim Zabe has another comment. Having a higher building will not be in favor of the neighbors. Um, Okay, thank you for, I mean, I guess we, we note the commentary. And again, I think that they had uh, addressed that in their submission and their presentation. And that would be something that has been reviewed as the impact on light and sun studies and shade studies as well. Correct. The higher component of the proposed project is setback uh, that is had added to the existing volume is set back on the sides on all four sides and is uh, uh, has demonstrated not to have uh, impact on the in the within the sun studies that were submitted yes okay so thank you for that uh commentary does anyone else want to comment on that particular question no and is that it madame jodoy first question submitted have, online we have three more comments. Okay, my, they are not showing up in my in my chat, so I'm not sure why, but I will leave it to you to read and we'll answer them. Okay, the next comment is from Davika Tews. Um, During the presentation today, there was talk of the size of the building on Hillside Lane, but made no mention of the side of the building directly facing 11 Hillside, the west side of the building. Could you please give more information on the demo plan for this side of the building. I live in 11 Hillside and face this west wall, and I'm concerned about the loss of privacy considering the plan I saw in the presentation I saw prior to today's meeting. Uh, can I 
cannot answer that technical question, but I will leave it to Madame Girlando uh, if she would like to answer that. But again, I would uh, I would caution that this is really about the demolition at this point. Yes, absolutely. I'll, I can answer that. Uh, so we did hear your concern. I know that it was a concern in, our, in, in the past project that we presented. And I think that the architect Maurice Martel was very clever because uh, instead of having kind of the window right on the wall, there's actually kind of a setback because there's terraces inside. So you actually have eight feet of terrace so that you wouldn't be facing someone's window directly. And then I think it would be more private for both sides. So we didn't really talk about that side because of, uh, uh, I think it was in the city's presentation. It was, we went, by, we went through it quite quickly um, and we were not planning on demolishing it but as we were making some you know big holes for the windows uh, and having discussions with the city and the urban planning um, committees uh, you know we were discussing this and they also recommended that making all these holes without demolishing dem demolishing this side was was maybe very tricky so um, we thought that was very wise advice uh, and decided to demo demolish the section where we're going to add some kind of big openings for terraces. So in terms of privacy, I think that was a very good way to kind of give privacy uh, in the measures that we can, because we are keeping the footprint and we cannot change that. And we need to have windows and we cannot change that either, because <laughs> uh, nobody wants to live in uh, an apartment with no windows. Then well, we wouldn't let you. So there you go. We have rules about that too. Um, okay, perfect. Uh, any other questions or comments on that? There are two last comments. One okay. is anonymous. Um, I don't, I don't, I will take it, but I must say I don't appreciate anonymous comments because, um, but we will, you can read it and... Okay. Would it not be in the best long-term interest of the school nearby to have this property demolished and restored? A decision truly has to be made for the safety of these children. Okay, so the, the question or the point is noted. I mean, that this is what they are applying for is a, is a, uh, is a demolition permit uh, and to have a housing project on on the site and yes it is uh it, it's got westmount high right across the street from it so <clears throat> does anyone else want to comment on that no okay um we there's another question that has been added um so i will read the before last question this is from john fretz uh, will the large windows be restored as they presently exist the windows are distinctive of the past history of the armory. Can you say this for sure? Or is there a likelihood of your later saying structural problems mean the high windows cannot be restored? Okay, again, I would point out that this would be addressed as part of the replacement plan and is not, um, is not part of the demolition. And we really are here for the demolition, but I think Mr. Fretz, you would have seen in the drawings that they had proposed before that you, uh, the window scheme uh, is there. Does anyone else want to comment on this? No, okay, thank you. Next question. Also a question from John Fretz. The developer has said they will be building 27 condos. Another statement said, $10 million would restore the building as is, if I understood that correctly, for industrial use. We have never had a real consultation. My question is, would it be, wouldn't it be better to repurpose this building for other uses than specifically condos in a high density area? Uh... He, I mean, I'm not going to comment on, uh, I'm not going to comment on, on the cost of what the restoration is. Um, and again, Mr. Fretz, we are really talking about the demolition side of this, but yes, there is, it is for 27 units of, of, of housing of 27, you know, new housing units within the area. 
And a question that you had asked uh, me at council before, and I know a lot of people have raised is why hasn't the city bought this and used it as uh, use the site as putting in an indoor pool and things like that. It is not a site or a building that would be uh, that, that we could do that on. It's not big enough for that, um, but I will, I will leave it at that. Does anyone else want to comment on this? Madame Jodouin, oui. The current zoning calls for residential use. Yeah, yeah. And the next question, we are is that done. it? There are no longer any questions in the Q&A box. Okay, and then I see Mr. Fretz's hand up, but I'm assuming that he's submitted his question. Um, I don't know if we, that is the case. Mr. Fretz, did you have a further question before we council leaves to deliberate this issue? No? Okay. I see the hand up, but uh, okay. So now, uh, Thank you for the input. Thank you for the neighbors that have engaged in, been engaged in this um, and uh, have asked their very pertinent questions on this. We will now uh, leave the Zoom, but the Zoom will stay open so you can, uh, you can stay on it and we will, we council will deliberate and we will be back um, hopefully within a timely manner to uh, discuss our committee's decision. So I would uh, counsel, please turn off your, your cameras and your mics. So I think has everybody joined back here? We, do we have, uh, I believe we have everybody. So apologies for uh, taking so long. Um, let me just organize myself here. Uh, apologies everyone for taking so long. Good evening, everyone. So now we are going to return um, back with, there is one item that I meant to uh, move prior to uh, us deliberating, but it is the item number seven, which I will hand over to Councillor Peart, which is the tabling of the Planning Advisory Committee minutes, which we had uh, referenced the um, referenced the recommendation uh, from the Planning Advisory Committee. So, Councillor Peart. Merci, Madame la Mairesse. I'll read the whereas in this case. Whereas the Planning Advisory Committee held a special meeting on January 28th of 2022, and that minutes are submitted to the sitting of the Demolition Committee. Whereas the main role of the Planning Advisory Committee is to analyze and give an opinion on any request that must be submitted to it in accordance with the Land Use Planning and Development Act, um, e.g. SPAIP, minor exemption, Scopy, conditional uses, et cetera, and on any other application in matters of land use planning and development that is submitted to it by council. I move that council acknowledge and accept the minutes of the Planning Advisory Committee's special meeting held on January 28th of 2022. Thank you very much, Councillor Peart. A seconder on this will be Councillor Gallery. All in favor? Carried, any further comments on that, Councillor Peart or Gallery? At this point, or perhaps you want to comment later? Nope, I, be I believe that um, Madame Jodouin had summarized the, the content of, of that recommendation in the presentation. Okay, Police perfect. administration it might not have been Madame Jodouin. Thank you. Okay, so now we will move to item number nine, which is what many people are here waiting for, which is the committee's decision. And I will hand it over to Councillor Peart and then other members of council um, and myself may make some commentary as well. So uh, uh, Councillor Peart. Thank you, Madam Lamares. Whereas on March 19th of 2021, a demolition permit application was submitted to the city of Westmount for the demolition of 87% of a vacant four-story commercial building located at one to three Hillside Avenue to convert it to, into a five-story residential building, including the provision of 27 res new residential units. Whereas on January 11th of 2022, a public notice was published as required by law and the city of Westmount's bylaw. Whereas on January 11th, 2022, a copy of said notice was posted on the proposed demolition site. Whereas following the publication of the public notice, 
the city clerk's office received 29 letters of comments or oppositions, the majority of which were in favor of the demolition of the building, whereas the analysis of the urban planning department demonstrates that the demolition application meets the criteria of bylaw 1317 concerning demolition, whereas the structure and envelope of the building shows significant deterioration as documented, whereas numerous transformations have been carried out over the years and have affected the authenticity of the original building, whereas the preliminary replacement program must be subject to a subsequent application for a specific construction alteration or occupancy proposal for an immovable, otherwise known as scope in accordance with bylaw 1489 concerning specific construction alteration or occupancy proposals for an immovable scope of the city of Westmount. Whereas the application is for the demolition of 87% of the building, but there is a need to allow for some flexibility to accommodate unforeseen site conditions. Whereas the planning advisory committee has issued recommendations, whereas the preliminary replacement program will have a positive economic and social impact on the area. I move that the above preamble be part of this resolution that council authorized this demolition of the building located at one to three Hillside Avenue on lot number 4142847 in accordance with the information provided in the application number 2022-03005 dated January 11th of 2022 and associated with permit application number, 2020, number 2021-00343, the whole subject to the following conditions. One, that a replacement project be approved by council in accordance to bylaw 1489 concerning specific construction alteration or occupancy proposals for an immovable scope B of the city of Westmount. Two, that the replacement program submitted with the scope B application respect the main characteristics of the preliminary replacement program associated with the present demolition application in terms of height, volume, layout, architecture, and materiality. Three, that a site plan and architectural integration plan be approved by council. Four, that a monetary guarantee representing 10% of the projected value of the work be provided prior to the issuance of the demolition permit for the reuse of the cleared land requiring the demolition of a, mil of a building located at 1 to 3 Hillside Avenue. The guarantee may, at the request of the applicant, be released upon substantial comple completion of the work. Five, that the construction work be started within 12 months of the issuance of the demolition permit. Six, that the construction permit be issued prior to or simultaneously with the issuance of the demolition permit. Thank you very much, Councillor Peart. A seconder on this motion will be Councillor Aronson. Uh, any further comments? Does anyone else want to comment? I mean, I have a few comments as well, uh, but we will. I, I believe that the mayor's dramatic pause is in fact her Wi-Fi kicking out, which I believe means that uh, Councilor Pert will now chair the meeting. Right. Correct? So Start Councilor Aronson, who is the Councilor oh. for the area. Sorry, oh, I'm for, I, I keep freezing in here, so. Uh, if I do that again, obviously Councillor Peart takes over, but Councillor Aronson, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank the, the, the large number of atten attendees who came out tonight, well, stayed at home tonight, but joined us on their screens uh, to, to consider the future of this important structure in our neighborhood. Um, these committee meetings are very, very interesting to those who have the patience to sit through all the stuff that we're doing right now. And uh, I, I noticed that there's been a large number of people relative to other meetings that we've had who've taken notice. And I, uh, that, that bodes well, I think, for the body politic in which we all belong. I'm really sensitive to the um, objections that have been raised by the neighbors who may, in the event that council votes in favor of the demolition project and the replacement project, might have to be inconvenienced for some period of time uh, during a demolition and, uh, and reconstruction. Uh, nobody wants to live in a construction site. And yet all of us live in homes that were at some time or another constructed and therefore benefited from the suffering of the neighbors that we now have around us. So, you know, in, in the spirit of, of, uh, of understanding that what goes around comes around for good or for worse, 
I'm in favor of this project, and I'm going to urge uh, my fellow counselors to vote in favor of it for three fundamental reasons. First off, as the promoters of this project have put forward, this building is clearly in extremely bad condition and is verging on, and we, we all admit, it's an eyesore, uh, but it's verging on being extremely dangerous. And uh, I would not want to lose the opportunity to have the owners of this building take responsibility for the condition of its uh, of its uh, of the the uh, building at this time and put their time and their energy and money into fixing it into something better that benefits the community secondly the project that uh, has been presented as a possible replacement bodes well for the type of spirit with which the owners of this building have come forward uh, they've demonstrated to me at least and i hope to the rest of this council that they take seriously the historic value of the property that they own and are doing everything in their power to keep the elements of the building that are beautiful and that are, are to be preserved. And I appreciate that. And thirdly, uh, housing in Westmount is in short supply. This will give an opportunity for us to welcome 27 new families uh, who otherwise would not necessarily become members of our community. I think that there is uh, something to be said for having a spirit of generosity and welcoming those who otherwise wouldn't have a place uh, in our community. And so uh, with that in mind, I uh, would like to say that first off, I'm in favor of this project and uh, I would urge my fellow counselors to vote for it. Uh, and for those who oppose it to understand that these are not decisions we may take lightly um, and that in this particular case, the benefits outweigh any inconveniences. And so, in the event that the demolition is granted, I beg your forgiveness and your understanding and cooperation. And uh, before we know it, we'll have another beautiful new building in our community. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Councillor Aronson. Uh, does anyone else want to make any further comments before we go to a vote on this? No, I think we, uh, Councillor Peart, you covered yeah. a lot of the details in the whereas is. Um, I did indeed, and, and it's, it's difficult to follow up on uh, Councillor. Councillor Aronson's eloquence, um, <clears throat> but I, I I I do support the, the project, the demolition of this, the uh, partial demolition of this project. It is I, I did have some take issue with protects particularly some of the language that was being used. Um, I believe that it, we are looking at a reconstruction in kind and, and, and less of a conservation exercise and less of a restoration, but the, because we're not supposed to be talking about the replacement project, but the, the demolition that's being proposed seems to be the right answer because I believe the, the an intervention is absolutely necessary at this point. The status quo for a multitude of reasons is untenable. Um, mm -hmm. it, it is something has to be done, and we have a an, an opportunity here. Uh, we have some we have developers who are considerate of the structure. They have taken into account the the importance that it, that it holds in our community, the, the history that it holds in our community, um, and so I look forward to seeing what they do with this and, and as we go on to the next step which will be the scopey step um, i'm sure there'll be some refinements that need to be done and, and as councillor aronson has has referenced previous previously we it would be an opportunity to welcome 27 new new families to the community and what we offer what, what's been my observation in my short time on, on council is that when we have these public consultations we it it, it draws in many people from the community, but what we never hear from are the people who are, could potentially be our future residents. And they have a voice, but that voice isn't being heard around the tables. And I'm sure that in the same way that the 42 residents who are at Hillside would have wished that they had a voice when their building was being constructed and another building was coming down, then these potentially new residents would have a, would have a voice around the table here today. So. Yeah. Um, one other point that I would like to address, because it's an issue where we are, where council seems to be leaning towards making a recommendation that is in opposition or counters the, or does not align with the, uh, with the recommendation that was made by, by PAC. Um, I've said previously that the PAC and council or roles are, um, 
our, our, world, our roles work together, but the, the objectives are not always, the objectives are aligned, but, but the, the way we have to approach these things are not always, are, are not always the same. So PAC has to review a project in its, um, in, in a more narrow focus and to see if it, if it, if it fits in with the guidelines which are set out by our regulations. Council has to zoom out a little bit more and to see if the if it, what's on the table, if the, if the proposal fits in with what our intentions are for the for the large for the large community. Um, and so I think with this, it's a we have a project that requires a significant demolition. I would almost say that it's it's a, uh, it's a, 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 we go as far as to say that it's a de facto re de demolition, even though a portion of it will be will be retained in, in in its original state. But for all intents and purposes, the entire skin will be different. Um, the construction of of the roof will be completely di di different. The the interiors, the the structure will be completely different. So it's it, it would be inaccurate in my mind to call, to call this a restoration. But this is this will be could potentially be a reconstruction in kind and in the style of, in the spirit of, in the evocation of what was once there. And so it will have, it will find my support in this project. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I, uh, I agree with certainly the comments made by both Councillor Aronson and Councillor Peart. And I would encourage, uh, you know, if, if this applicant does get its demolition permit and eventually its, its building permit, that they stay in close contact with the neighbors and and continue with open lines of communication you've got very important neighbors in that area west mount high school st margaret's 11 hillside uh the kensington there's there's certainly uh no shortage of neighbors there so i would encourage them to um, continue that communication so now we will call for a vote so all in favor of um this motion I am seeing a unanimous uh, showing of hands. So thank you, so carried. Now we have a second question period. If there are any questions that are submitted in the Q&A, si y a d'autres questions, on peut mettre ça dans la section Q&A. And if not, we will adjourn the meeting. Uh, and just to be clear, the, de the, the demolition permit has been approved by council. So. I'm not seeing any Q&A. Madame Jodoin, is there any? My Q&A is being a little bit funny, so I just want to double check. Okay. Uh, hang on, I see raised hands, but... Oui, il y a des mains levées. Um, donc, Monsieur Robert Martin. Est-ce qu'il pose une question? Il est là. Sorry, unmuted. Uh, my question would be the following. If we're giving permit to go ahead, the 13% remaining, I wonder why we're hanging on to that when it makes it difficult for the people building this to uh, use these portions that are deteriorated. Would it not be better to just completely do it from the bottom up in the look of the older building and make it a safe uh, project? Sorry, I had froze there for a moment, uh, but I think your question was why the 13%? Yeah, with that, the that... Build, yeah, with the building in the state of deterioration that it is, you're asking them to hang on to portion. Well, that way, the that's, that's what they, uh, that was what they applied for. That was uh, their doing. We didn't, uh, we didn't ask for the 13% on that, but that is very much part of the replacement project. So we can address that as well. I don't, Councillor Peart, do you have anything you want to add to that? Well, I, I think you answered it perfectly in that um, we are we are approving the permit that was submitted and that those, those, those are the constraints which they set up for themselves and that's what we accorded to them. Okay, thank you. Uh, and any further questions or hands up? Il y a Madame Girmando ici. Girmando, pardon. Uh, so the the developer has a question or a commentary. Monsieur Girmando. Oui, allô. Oui. oui. 
Écoutez, euh, je voulais simplement vous remercier de votre temps et de votre attention d'avoir d'avoir pu interpréter le projet tel que, tel que nous l'avons pensé et nous voulons vous assurer que nous sommes anxieux de continuer à travailler avec la ville pour réaliser le projet que, que plus, en fait, le projet que nous vous avons présenté et que plus nous croyons euh, s'adapter à l'environnement et à la rue Hillside. OK, merci beaucoup pour votre commentaire. Uh, I'm not seeing any other hands up, are we? They are down. And then uh, I think there's commentary in the chat. I agree with the comments made. Again, the very narrow concern is damage to 11 Hillside during the demolition, given the existing uh, damage already. I would like this noted for the record. Thank you for all your work and diligence. So thank you. It is, it is noted. It will be part of the mint the record of this meeting. Um, so thank you for your, thank you for your comments. Uh, do we have one final question, Madame Jodoin? Yes, there is uh, one attendee to the letters PL who asks the question, can you reconfirm the duration of the demolition? To that question, I think we can uh, answer that the duration of the construction or the whole process was identified as 24 months, but I will let the uh, promoter uh, confirm or infirm what I've just stated. Okay, I think, yeah, I think this maybe they're asking, I'm not sure if they're asking about the length that they have to demolish versus the construction, but that it was uh, 12 months is in the motion uh, and 24 months was what they estimated, right? Okay, thank you. Are there any, is that it for questions? Oui, je vois la main de uh, la demandeur ici. Je vais lui permettre de parler. Hi, thank you. I just wanted to answer the question is that uh, we're planning for the demolition to take about uh, three months. Okay. Thank you. And I think that's it for questions. So the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very, thank you very much, everyone. Bonsoir tout le monde. Merci beaucoup. Au revoir.